The challenge today, can I make a 1000 point and 2000 point Battle Sisters list where every model is either a vehicle or has their unit deployed in a vehicle? After the points drop in September, what if you refuse to become a horde of sisters? What if you have seen how tough tanks are even for melter guns to break and you want in on that toughness? Maybe with our codex being announced, you want to buy some vehicles in preparation for an Argent Shroud style detachment. This is the video for you, with the lists you may want to consider. And don't forget, you can get models cheaper than buying them through Games Workshop by using my affiliate links which are in the description. There are three transports available to us. You may think, but there's two, an Immolator and a Rhino. And those are what we'll talk about first. Rhinos are there to get in the way of the enemy, and to transport your troops up the field. Or, in 1000 point games especially, they can hold an objective by themselves, be on it, block enemy movement from reaching it, and perform actions. If they get damaged a little bit, they have the ability to repair one wound in your own command phase. This is just a rule that everyone forgets. But it's there. It's more relevant in smaller games where you'll be taking, in theory, less damage. The guns are nothing to write home about. It has a Storm Bolter, but it's not as good as the Battle Sisters Artificer Storm Bolter. And we have a Hunter Killer Missile that hits on a 2. You will roll a 1 when you try and fire this. Or if you do succeed in hitting, it has Strength 14, so it's wounding most things on a 2. You will roll a 1. And if you do manage to get through that to get to the enemy's armor save, it's minus 3, they'll roll a 6. They just, they will. You never do damage with Hunter Killer Missiles. Toughness 9, this is a lighter vehicle. Not truly light, like Penitent Engine Light. I suppose you could call it a middling vehicle. Toughness 9 means that Melter Guns are wounding it on a 4+. And 10 wounds means that it's going to be taking at least two decent Melter Shots to take it down. But there's a couple of things protecting it. We have the smoke keyword, so if it had a valuable squad inside that you didn't want to let get destroyed, we can use smoke screen because we have the smoke keyword. This gives you the benefit of cover, and it makes enemies minus one to hit you. And as a backup to that, something that we're probably going to forget that we have because of how little AP the majority of weapons have, but melter guns are minus four AP. So our invulnerable save of six plus kicks in. Occasionally, you'll roll it, and it'll really spoil the enemy's plans. So don't forget that it's there. But the Rhino has even more guns, actually, because it has firing deck two. That means that two models inside can shoot out. So if you have Retributors, and I wouldn't recommend Retributors in a Rhino, but if you have Dominions or Battle Sisters, you could have two of their weapons, like two Melter Guns, Heavy Bolter and a Storm Bolter, something like that, they can fire out. You can also have the Plasma Pistols on the Sister Superior, if you go against the Holy Trinity. That can fire, and the way it works when you're firing it from the firing deck, if you fail your hazardous roll by rolling a 1 after overcharging it, you don't kill off the Sister Superior. The gun is technically passed to the Rhino, and the Battle Sister that was firing it just goes, ah, and puts down the overheating plasma pistol, and it causes three wounds to the Rhino as it slightly melts the hull. Plasma pistol keeps working though, so you can fire it again next turn. Generally, I would only take the Rhino if you want to get 10 to 12 sisters, because remember, you can fit 12 inside, that's probably going to be 10 sisters plus one character. If you want to get sisters to an objective, to get out and generate miracle dice on a further up objective, or for dominions, you can scout up the board, get the sisters out, and then the dominions are quite close to be able to use their melter guns with the melter special rule so that they're doing plus two damage assuming we hit and wound. But that's why you would have an attached character like a Palatine that gives them lethal hits. The Immolators let you split a unit of 10 into two units of five. Now for this purpose with the video I'm doing, this still counts as deploying the unit in a vehicle, just half of them fell out again. You can split a Battle Sister Squad, Dominion Squad, or Sister Novitiate Squad. Now you're most likely to want to split a Battle Sister Squad so that you have one unit that's moving up towards an objective to get out and generate Miracle Dice, and you'll want another unit that can stay back on your home objective and generate Miracle Dice. For Dominions, similar thing, but four Sisters with Bolt Guns and a Sister Superior can stay back, while the Simulacrum and the four Sisters with the Special Weapons can go in the Immolator, drive up, and damage something. Another interesting note, if you were splitting a Dominion Squad or a Battle Sister Squad into two separate squads, well, we also get one Cherub. Now, the way the Cherubs work, it's token, it's the 11th model in this 10 model box, and it lets you have a new Miracle Dice after you spend a Miracle Dice on the unit. It is a unit ability on their card, it is not something that is tied to a particular model. So when you split the squad in half, both units of five get the Cherub. It isn't that you need to decide who gets the cherub like it's a weird family separation case. 
the model is like a reminder token to use this ability. It is not just that there is only one. So splitting a squad into two groups of five, you are doubling the amount of cherubs you get. When it comes to characters being attached to the squads, you can attach a character to both halves of the squad. Now you may look at point five and say, ah, but attaching characters comes before you put them in a transport. But it isn't the act of putting the sisters in the immolator that causes the split. If you look at the immolator rules, the split happens before part five. So you split the unit, promising that five of them are going to go in the immolator. And then as they are separate units of five sisters, you can add characters. So you could add a canonist and a hospitaller in the same squad of five sisters if you wanted. I don't know why you would want to, but you could. And the reason you can have two characters with five sisters is because the hospitaller has a rule that lets her join battle sister squads, even if there's a canonist. Max two characters allowed though. The rules commentary says so. The other five sisters that have been combat squatted, as it is termed, based off an ability that the Space Marine Tactical Squad has to split two squads into five, a rule they have gotten back recently in their codex. So we split the sisters with an immolator, then we add characters, could be a canonist to one squad, could be a palatine to the other squad. One of those halves goes in the immolator. Remember max size six, so you can't have the two characters plus the five sisters in the immolator. And the other five sisters and optional characters could then go in a different transport like a rhino or another immolator. So no sister has to walk. You don't have to split a unit in order to put it in the immolator. As long as every immolator has a unit start inside it. If you didn't like splitting your squad so that half of them are in transports and half of them are on foot, then you would have to choose rhinos instead of immolators until you're maxed out in rhinos. Sadly, due to the smaller size of sister squads and dominion squads being 10, and only their expensive retribute as being able to fit and still fire decent guns from the firing deck of the rhino, let's just not handicap ourselves more. That would be masochism, not martyrdom. The immolator's weapons, we come with a heavy bolter, we can have a hunter killer missile, which we know will miss, and we can change the turret, twin heavy bolter, twin multi-melter, or immolation flamers. The twin heavy bolter is considered the worst. The twin heavy bolter gives you three extra heavy bolter shots, Really, this is only valuable if you're facing something like Black Templars that has an absolute horde of Space Marines, and then you need the damage too to put them down. But I think the other weapons are going to be better. You can think of the Immolation Flamers as anti-infantry, and the Twin Multi-Melter as anti-vehicle, but really the Immolation Flamers also serve as anti-vehicle. Though there is far less penetration power, we are auto-hitting, and with 2d6 shots. So against a strength 10 vehicle or monster, we're wounding on a 5+, plus, just like with the multi-melters. Ha <laughs> ha! It's very sad. But that is the current state of melters and flamers within the Adeptus Sororitas. Even for the penetration, if the enemy has an invulnerable save, you are just better off going with the flamers. The weapons are the same range as well. So I would choose fire. You will notice that the immolation flamers are not twin-linked, Instead, we get the better version, as I consider it, rather than d6 shots that are auto-hitting twin-linked, we get 2d6 shots. So we can get through quite a lot of infantry quite quickly, and they are rather popular when you have absolutely hordes of Tyranids coming at you, regenerating, or hordes of Traitor Guardsmen coming at you with reinforcements. You're going to need to keep getting rid of them. Bolters will mostly do the job, but there's also another reason why I like the Immolation Flamers. We want them because they are auto-hitting. The fire support rule means that in the shooting phase, if a unit that disembarked from the immolator this turn shoots at the same target that the immolator has hit this phase, the disembarked unit gets to re-roll all of the wound rolls. As long as the immolator hit with at least one of its shots against the same target. So rather than having two multi-melter shots hitting on a 3+, plus, yes, will probably hit. Will you remember to use a 3 for a miracle dice? You may not. To activate this ability, you just need one successful hit. Auto-hitting flamers will give you at least one successful hit. So if you want your anti-tank firepower, that could come from the Dominions or Retributor Squad that's just been inside and got out, then their melter guns or multi-melters will get re-rolls to wound. The important bit, because like we've said, if we were shooting something like an immolator that has toughness 10, we're wounding on fives. The re-rolls are necessary. And I do prefer Dominions to Retributors for going in an Immolator. We can scout with them because this is a dedicated transport. The Dominions have scout 
and so the transport itself gets to move with them at the start of the game. So we can get to the midboard and start performing actions right away, either with the Dominion Squad or the Immolator. Retributors can't scout. 10 Dominions is cheaper than 5 Retributors. The Retributors already have an ability to reroll wands to wound, so adding them with the Immolator's ability to fully reroll wounds is a bit of anti-synergy. We're adding on an ability that we already have, a better version, but we already have that. Dominions don't have that. Instead, they have assault weapons. Assault on everything. Assault flamers, assault melters, assault storm bolters, assault bolt guns. These were fired from the firing deck of a rhino. They would still be fired even if the rhino advanced. Remember how firing decks work? And while we're getting half the shots because we got four melter guns rather than four multi melters, multi melters being two shots, we're hitting on threes rather than fours. If you did want that one big punch, retributors in an immolator is okay. I think that's probably going to be the only way to use Retributors unless you have them with heavy bolters way up high in a building where you can get the plunging fire rule to be minus one AP in addition to their existing minus one AP for minus two AP on their damage two weapons. But I'm more of a fan of Dominions, even if we can't have them in squads of five unless with an Immolator. Now the third dedicated transport for the Battle Sisters, the Repressor. Don't forget them. Just because they're a Legends unit doesn't mean that you can't use them. Just that their points aren't going to be updated anymore this edition, and you can't take them in most tournaments. They're better than a Rhino, and do about as much shooting as an Immolator. Now Dominions love it. With Firing Deck 6, then you can have the four special weapons, the Sister Superior's combi weapon firing, and if you've got a Palatine in the unit, their Plasma Pistol or Bolt Pistol can fire out the top as well. There's no need to get out of the transport. You can just fire from within. As it's a dedicated transport, it means it can scout, all dedicated transports can scout if everything inside has scout as an ability. But this is only dedicated transports, not all transports. That would be an absurd mistake to make. I've never made that mistake with something like a rock grinder and thought that a rock grinder could scout because it's a transport but doesn't matter because it's not a dedicated transport. But anyway, this way there's no need to split the Dominions into two separate squads with an emulator. There are some downsides to that, you'll have fewer units to hold as many objectives, but the benefit of having them all together in one big squad is that the Palatine special ability of lethal hits is now affecting 10 sisters rather than just 5. Instead, what you could do is have two squads of Retributors inside the Repressor, then all but two of the heavy weapons can be firing from the top, no need to get out, and while you could do that, it gets very pricey and is less efficient. If you wanted lots of high strength shots from a tank, Look to the Castigator or the Exorcist instead. This Repressor has the Twin Flamer, but not the same as the Immolation Flamer on the Immolator. This is a Twin Linked version rather than having twice as many shots. So Immolation Flamer, 2d6 shots of strength 6. Repressor Twin Heavy Flamer, d6 shots, strength 6, but Twin Linked, so you get to reroll to wound. So that gives you a little bit of anti-tank damage potentially, but yeah, you're using it against infantry. Unlike on an Immolator, you can't swap out the turret to have heavy bolters or multi-melters. But you can have an extra heavy flamer or a storm bolter, and we're going to take the heavy flamer, because this is not an artificer storm bolter, it's a regular storm bolter. And we also have a hunter killer missile. Before you fire the hunter killer missile, make sure to use an otherwise near useless miracle dice of a 2. This is what it's good for, making sure that you actually hit on a 2 plus, otherwise your missile will miss. We have a Dozer Ram, that is strength 7, which gives you another extra dice for tank shock compared to the Rhino and the Immolator, and there's more chance of you having a strength higher than the enemy toughness, which gives you two more dice for tank shock. So the Repressor is like an Immolator and a Rhino combined, but with the higher toughness of the Immolator. And one more wound. But you certainly pay the price for the best of both worlds. It is 130 points compared to 115 for the Immolator, or 75 for the Rhino. So if you want to get a unit of 10 moving up the board, get a Rhino. If you want fire support and fire and guns that work better and more fire with fire that fires well, choose the Immolator. If you really want to try the best of both worlds, you are paying the cost. But otherwise, it's basically going down as quickly as an Immolator. Our mechanized sisters are going to want characters to join them. How about a Dogmata? Now that's not something I would normally recommend, but it gives you a minimum objective control of one. I know it says it adds one here, but rules commentary. If you had something like Battleshock, which sets your objective control to zero, you do that first, then you add the modifiers like plus one. 
So even Battleshocked, and the Dogmata gives you some resistance to Battleshock, even then we're objective control 1. And if our Battle Sisters are perfectly fine and have the Dogmata, then they're each objective control 3. That is equal to a tank, so it's very suitable for a mechanised list. And the OC of at least one means that you can hold objectives, and now that Insane Bravery is once per battle, and you have to use it before you roll the dice, this is a great backup. And I would only use Insane Bravery if you don't have the Miracle Dice for it, or you're saving your few Miracle Dice to make good attacks. It's going to depend on how many Miracle Dice you have at the time. I would put the Dogmata with Sisters to enhance their objective control too, rather than putting the Dogmata with Dominions, because even though then you have the same objective control as Sisters, we could just get sisters instead. And the Dogmata plus Dominions, we would lose Scout, because unless every model in the unit has Scout, that attached unit isn't going to Scout. The Palatine has Scout, so when you put the Palatine with Dominions, the unit as a whole, as an attached unit, can still Scout. And that includes being inside a Rhino or an Immolator. This is a good and popular choice. And it's a choice that a lot of you make when you're choosing where to put your Palatine. Lethal Hits is very good on anything other than the Flamers in the Dominion Squad. Melter Guns, if we can roll a 6 to hit, great. We don't need to worry about needing a 5 to wound. The Artificer Storm Boulders, you're getting quite a few shots. 4 shots per gun, so if you have 4 of them, we can do mathematics. 16 shots, 2 or 3 of them are going to be 6s. And as Strength 4 Storm Bolters, you're not that likely to wound most enemies. The Lethal Hits gets around that. However, then we still have AP 0, so that's where we fall down. But that damage too, if it gets through, is lovely for getting rid of Chaos Marines. And the Palatine is a good choice in most any list, but especially in Mechanized Sisters lists. And they add quite a bit of combat punch as well. But if our Mechanized Force wants more combat, Repentia or Arco Flagellants in a Rhino. Now the Repentia are squishier and more in need of the Rhino because they only have one wound each, but if it gets blown up, the Arco Flagellants are better able to survive the explosion with their Feel No Pain and two wounds. The way destroyed transports work, you roll a dice for every model it's inside, for every one, a model in that squad, your choice, takes a mortal wound. So the two wound Arco Flagellants with a Feel No Pain have a lot of resistance to that. Very little damage, but that is maybe because it is an explosion. The fire goes outwards, not inwards. That would be an implosion. This is how science works. If you're inside a thing that's exploding, you're mostly fine. However, there's another good reason to take Repentia instead. The Repentia Superior can fire her bolt pistol from the Rhino firing deck. So take that, Arco Flagellant mains. I've done a video comparing them. Both units have their uses. If you know you're going to be facing a horde army like Necrons, yes, they are definitely a horde, they can take Destroyer Focus, but in their new codex, that's less viable compared to many, many Necron warriors. Or there's Tyranids, they can be a horde unless they're going monster heavy, and especially Orcs that have Toughness 5 and lots of bodies. Then you would choose Arco Flagellants. I choose them quite a lot in casual games because they're more likely to come up than something like Gene Stealer Cult, because there are more Necron and Tyranid players due to the 9th edition and 10th edition starter boxes, including those factions. If you know you're going to be facing traitors, like Chaos Marines or Renegades, like whatever that is, then you're going to want Repentia, because their damage to swords and strength 6 will get through the power armor. We're not done with vehicles yet. This is just the mechanized side. Now we want the support vehicles that are actually doing the shooting. The Exorcists and the Castigators. If you want to have anti-infantry firepower, a Castigator is a great choice. I've already mentioned taking the Heavy Bolter and Twin Heavy Bolter on the Immolator if you need to take down a lot of Black Templars, but the Castigator does that better. Three Heavy Bolters, so that's three more shots, and we have sustained hits, and then we can have the Castigator Auto Cannons or Castigator Battle Cannon. The Auto Cannons are eight shots at half range, and you get to reroll hit rolls against infantry. As it's strength 9 and twin linked, it can also have a go at vehicles, either wounding on a 4 if it's a vehicle the level of a rhino, or wounding on a 5 if it's a vehicle or a monster with a higher toughness. But with twin linked, regardless of what we're firing at, we re-roll those wound rolls. Both the Castigator Auto Cannons and the Castigator Battle Cannon are only AP-1, but both provide damage 3, and prompt a battle shock test on their target. Oh, and there's a Hunter Killer Missile if you want to miss with that as well. Now the Castigator Battle Cannon has one higher strength, which is important when you're attacking vehicles, and it gets rerolled to hit against vehicles, but it's not bad against taking out infantry as well. If you're facing a lot of Death Guard Terminators, the number of shots plus blast plus ignores cover, and doing damage 3, I mean both are good. There's very little between them as to which gun is better. Either one is fine. I am known for preferring Exorcists over Castigators. 
In a normal list with few to no other vehicles, having an exorcist lets you keep your vehicle out of line of sight and still fire, which makes the enemy anti-tank face off against a toughness 3 sister with a 6 plus invulnerable save. In a mass armor list like this, there are a lot of targets for the enemy anti-tank weapons, so the castigators don't just get focused on immediately. So it's okay to move them up, provided you can get line of sight. You should be able to see above other rhinos and around the penitent engine, but the immolator and its massive stained glass front may prove a bit more difficult. A word on line of sight, as I'm now on like the third time I've seen this error. You cannot fire through your own models. So you can't turn a tank sideways and shoot through it, but then not get shot back yourself. Your own units block line of sight. Infantry block line of sight, monsters block line of sight, and vehicles block line of sight. The only exception to this is models in the same unit. So a Battle Sister Beatrice doesn't block line of sight for Battle Sister Amelia, but Battle Sister Clara's Rhino very much blocks line of sight. Normally, I would suggest Seraphim to remove enemies from their home objective, but in a mechanized list, it is not the worst idea to have an Exorcist with the smaller missiles. They have ignore cover and indirect fire. So it can fire at enemy infantry, remain stationary so that you still hit on a 3+, plus, and because it ignores cover, which is something that the enemy would get because we're firing indirectly, and as there's often a lot of cover around on tables these days, it can attack enemies that are hunkered down without penalty. I don't think the conflagration missiles are as amazing as the exorcist missiles, you know, from the exorcist missile launcher. But with enemies always getting cover for being out of line of sight, it's only one AP point of difference. But the small missiles are not going to kill five space marines holding an objective, something like a Death Watch kill team or an intercessor squad. The big missiles will. So I prefer, as I think everyone does, going for the larger exorcist missiles. If you do like the conflagration missiles, please say in the comments, we won't laugh at you, we will just think it's very interesting. Now if you don't like or don't have the tiny missiles for the exorcist, outflanking an immolator with half a sister squad, so you've got a flamer, combi weapon and a multi melter, they should be able to deal with enemies on a home objective. The missile exorcist may be better, but outflanking is an option. Not the best option, because when you're out flanking, you're gonna have to wait an extra turn, you won't be able to disembark until the turn after you've arrived from reserve. Because disembarking happens in the regular step of the movement phase, and arriving from reserves happens later in the step, the reserve step. That is how the Games Workshop Tournament FAQ has it, and is how most people play it, even though it isn't super explicit that you can't disembark in the reinforcement step. Another interesting, I say interesting, tedious, tedious rule issue, though a minor one, is the question of how many points half a squad of battle sisters is. If you split them in an immolator and need to figure out the points destroyed for victory conditions or for how many points you can have in reserve, how many points are they? Sensibly, as we're doing mathematics now, not science, we've moved on from science, we're now doing mathematics, I would say they're 50 points. Because we learned this in school, 100 divided by 2 is 50, and I'm willing to go with that. I wouldn't think that I suddenly have 2,100 points of models just because I split a 100 point unit in half. But there are no rules for this beyond the points cost of what the unit is. Up to 10 sisters are 100 points. But please let us be sensible. Please. If you split a sister novitiate squad which has 85 points right now, I would say one is 43 points, the one with the superior, and the other is 42 points. That should work. Let's get some more combat vehicles in here. Penitent engines can support a Rhino Rush. They're a lighter vehicle with a toughness of 6, but they're a good distraction from your other battle tanks like the Castigator and the Immolator and the Rhinos. They can be annoying for the enemy to have to take down, because even though it's a 4 plus save, it's a 5 plus feel no pain on top of that, and you have to get through 5 wounds worth of that. But they are very obviously big and scary, on account of it's a dude running at you with massive buzz blades. That's good for killing enemy light tanks and small vehicles that are in the way. Hunter killer missiles were never going to do it. You can equip your penitent engines with twin penitent flails, but that profile looks to me so very much like the Arcoflagellants, and we've got the Arcoflagellants already in a Rhino. Yes, the penitent engine has an extra AP, but I much prefer the massive industrial buzz blade. But not the ones on Gene Steel Occultists today, the ones on penitent engines. We can also hide behind a building, then move round it, advance and charge. That is the special rule. And with an 8 inch move and the ability to advance and charge, it. Oh, yeah, that's just a Gene Stealer. This is just a very big, scary Gene Stealer. Maybe there is more overlap between Gene Steel Occult and Battle Sisters than I thought. 
Why do I like them both? Okay, alternatively, we could have Mortifiers. They get an extra save, because you can have a 3 plus save on them. And if you want that extra anti-space marine firepower, then we can have Heavy Bolters. We don't get the ability to advance and charge, but this is a unit that you will move into the centre of the table, complete actions, or hold a central objective, and the enemy is going to have to figure out how much firepower they're willing to put into it to get rid of it. It's surprisingly tough, but in this list, it is the weakest vehicle that you'd be putting out. And although I haven't done one for the Sisters of Battle yet, I have advice for making a 1000 point list with Gene Steeler Cult, and one of the key things that you have to do in a list is distract and delay the enemy. Having mortifiers right there in the center, something that the enemy has to deal with, is a great distraction. And it makes great use of a Repentia who decided that they didn't want to be Repentia and ran away, failing the Repentia exam twice. So now they're in a mortifier, and this is a great use for them canonically as well. Just stand in the open and receive redemption. What if we want walkers for combat, but we also want walkers for shooting? And what if we want something bigger than a penitent engine? Would you like a melter gun, but instead of wounding on a five, you're wounding on a three against most everything? Well, let's welcome the Armager Warglaive. Yay, it's the Armager Warglaive. Woo! So we have strength 12, minus four, d6 damage with melter four on the thermal spear. And we have our own penitent buzz blade called a Reaper Chain Cleaver. And while a penitent engine can be equipped with a buzz blade and a penitent flail, you could use the strength of the buzz blade for tank shock with that strength 10. But then if you're fighting against infantry, use the penitent flail. But you can only pick one combat weapon to fight with when you're in close combat. But the Armager Warglaive always has the choice to get the best of both. And a strike with the chain cleaver is much like the buzz blades, but with an extra damage. And we're hitting on a 3 plus rather than a 4 plus. So if you wanted to convert a penitent engine into a Warglaive, you can just keep one of the buzz blades. It's about accurate. Oh, and it also has exactly the same special rule as the modifier. See, this is a sister's vehicle. It just got misplaced and ended up in the Imperial Knights Index. And with a toughness of 10, it's rather difficult to get through. And for its damage output, I wouldn't want to throw it out in the middle and just hope that it survives. But this is a walker that's adding effective anti-tank firepower and close combat. Now I'm going to show off a 1000 point list and a 2000 point list in this theme. If you've skipped to the end, then you've missed why I chose these units and what you're going to use them for, so get yourself back to the start. 1000 points. We have an exorcist that is going to sit on the home objective, ideally out of line of sight, because it's in direct fire, so we can still keep using it to almost its full ability. We have 10 dominions and a palatine in a repressor. We're keeping them together as a big unit because the palatine's bonus will now cover more models. And I do very much love the assault bolt guns we have, along with the assault flamers and the assault melter guns. We won't be able to charge, which is what the Palatine wants to do, but being able to move, advance, and reroll the advance roll if we so wish, a rule I just keep forgetting, Dominions can be quite good for delivering deadly firepower. We have a penitent engine to be a distraction in the middle, or to charge and destroy enemy vehicles. But if we're destroying enemy infantry, that's what the Arco Flagellants and a Preacher in a Rhino are going to do. That lets them move up quite quick. If they get blown up, the explosion won't necessarily kill them. And then they're free to flail at the enemy, but effectively flail. And finally, we have five retributors in an immolator. This is the only place I'd want to see retributors in this list. Being able to get out and reroll those wound rolls on multi-melters, on heavy bolters if you wish, on heavy flamers, which is where you want the rerolls, because we don't need rerolls to hit with heavy flamers, that can be a nice punch. If you're trying to run this at a tournament and you're not allowed to bring legends units, I would swap the Repressor for an Immolator, then you have five Dominions that can scout on foot to an objective, and you will have enough points left over to give the Palatine the Blade of St. Eleanor. For the 2000 point list, 10 Sisters plus a Dogmata in a Rhino. I wasn't going to split the Sisters with an Immolator for this unit, because with more bodies becoming Objective Control 3 is going to mean the enemy will have to kill them all, which is harder to do when there are 10 of them and the Rhino can block the enemy getting to you. In short, this is my objective, go get your own. We use the Dogmata in a mechanized list, but not other lists, because in other lists we have enough bodies. In a mechanized list, we can't just throw wave after wave of potential martyrs at an objective. We have fewer units, so we need to have a higher objective control to hold those objectives better. This also gives us the character necessary for having a warlord. This rhino will follow up on one of the objectives in No Man's Land. For the flanks, the ten dominions are split by one of the immolators, and each unit of five gets an immolator transport. 
This will let us get to the objectives first because of Scout, and then the Armagers can come up and support shortly afterwards. Having the objectives first lets you complete actions and in Crusade games, and non-Leviathan missions, you can sometimes score in the first battle round. This makes Scout on the Dominions of paramount importance. In Crusade, units with Scout should be included for anything that scores at the end of your turn. Secondary objective cards in the Leviathan mission deck are also covered by this. To hold our home objective, we have 10 sisters but split by an immolator. One group of five stays at home, on foot, and generates miracle dice, and the other five outflank with the immolator to attack the enemy home base. The exorcist is doing much the same. Defend the base and attack the enemy base. It stays on the home objective and provides a leadership boost to the five sisters to pass tests caused by things like shadow and the warp, and the exorcist helps to screen opponents away from deep striking. It can have the tiny missiles or the chunky missiles. Whichever one wasn't in the 1k list, try the other. Or we'll just stick to the Exorcist missile launcher. These shoot enemy tanks and monsters, or you can remove the enemy from their home objective. And unlike deep striking units, you can do this from turn one to upset any plans your opponent has to hold one objective and hold more than you. The Repentia and the Rhino support the Immolator that had the Dominions with bolt guns. It comes in the second wave to clear the objective if we lost it. I went with Repentia in this list, but 10 Alcor Flagellants are the same price and would also work. The Castigators go where they're needed and shoot any annoyances. I chose one with each kind of cannon, but either one can shoot enemy infantry in cover or shoot vehicles. The Castigator weapons come more down to personal choice for modelling rather than which one is going to be better in game. They both work. Now each of the three central objectives will be attacked by a Warglaive, but the one in the very centre can hold back while the Mortifiers go in. One Mortifier could distract and block the enemy at the edge of the objective, while the other one completes actions. So, some fun was had, some subscribe buttons were clicked which made colours and lights come out, but there are many other options for Battle Sister allies, not just the Warglaives. So take a look at the importance of allies for fluff and gaming power, and have a great day of mechanised 40k.